two or three uh, Italian directors of all time, Dario Argento. Certainly, I would say even more than uh, Lucio Felucci. I butchered that name, but even more more so than him, um, Argento seems to can make a film um, that American audience can connect with more so than any other Italian director because, you know, it's not too complicated with him. Like, it's complicated, but it's not. So... Thank you for your fucking knowledge on that. I was waiting for you to finish. I did. Did you not hear the pause? That's your cue. Cue these nuts. Why don't no, you cue and... this cue ball? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Can't stand you. you sack God of damn it. Shit. We're yes. supposed to be a team here. Well, you don't... got mad because I was shitting on your list. Yes. Don't don't shit on it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to shit on it. I was just uh, saying actually, it. I don't really care. Like uh, I, I know you're, <laughs> I know our list is going to be totally different. It so is. it don't really, it don't really bother me to be honest no. with you. So Inferno is definitely an amazing Italian movie. Um, Belushi is, uh, you said two or three, but I'd say one or two um, in top. Well, but, this one is Argento. Oh, I said Belushi. My bad. I went, meant to say Argento. Felucci's the other one. Um, yeah, they kind of go back and forth with me. I think, I think uh, most people would would put Argento simply because their first exposure to Italian horror films is probably Suspiria. I think that was my first introduction. So was uh, Suspiria. But my favorite Italian horror film of all time is. Deep Red. So, oh, Deep Red is so fucking well, amazing. between the two, it's Deep Red, and Felucci directed that. My favorite favorite of all time is probably Demons, but that was somebody else. Yeah, Demons is amazing. Argento was, I think, an executive producer of Demons, though. So, anyway. Kind of counts. No, but that movie is definitely, um, is definitely going to be... Up on my list, you know. Honestly, I think that's a pretty good spot that you have it at. I, I don't know. Um, now you got me questioning. Like I thought I had an idea, but now you're like throwing a lot of curveballs. But no, that's an amazing movie. Anybody out there? Uh, I believe it's on Tubi right now. Um, if you get a chance, watch the uh, Mother Mother of Tears trilogy. They're fucking amazing movies. Yeah, well, coming in at number 129 is from 2013, and that is the remake of The Evil Dead. The remake, ooh. Um, yeah, this, uh, the remake, to me, is is definitely up there in my favorite Evil Dead movies. Um, I think it, I've got it at number three, uh, two or three, I can't remember, but I think the remake is up there in probably some of the best remakes of all time. Yeah, I agree with you. Coming in at number 128 from 2007, 30 Days of Night. Oh, man, 30 Days of Night. What a great... It's a good concept. It's, um, you know, you take something that happens in real life, which is, you know, that part of the country in Alaska, Alaska has literally 30 days of night. So what better way for, for a vampire to be than somewhere where they can spend a an month. entire fucking month of, in darkness? I like the fact that the vampires were different. They were just like fucking almost werewolf-like. Well, the 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 uh, vampires were... They looked down upon the humans as prey. They don't. They don't say, "Well, I'm a human that happens to be a vampire." They're like, "I'm a vampire. I have no chill. I'm not here to convince you that I'm anything other than what I am, which is a fucking monster." Yeah. That's it. That's it. And they have their own language too, which is awesome. I can't remember if there was anything like any other movie where they had their own language like that. Yeah. As, as far as vampires go. 
And the the fucking gore in the movie's fucking spectacular. Yeah. I think that these are the 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 most frightening vampires that you could ever run into. Everybody else, you know, you have to get right up on them to see, you know. Yeah, they're not charming. They're not uh, they yeah. don't have any charisma. Like they are just fucking savages. Yeah. Really good movie. Uh coming in at 127 an old one from 1932 and that is Freaks. Oh man. Uh that movie would not pass in this day and age. People no would shit all over that movie. Because it's about legitimate freaks or as we probably couldn't call them that these days. People with disabilities that kind of creep people out with their disabilities. Whether they are missing limbs or some type of, you know, some deformity. type of deformity. Deformity, you know. And really small, extra appendages, women with beards. Yeah, basically you know. the freak show type of deal, you know, which was... Um, American Horror Story made a whole season out of this at at one point. So, you yeah. know, uh, imagine you r- you're running a circus and you have a bunch of freaks who's, you know, a part of your attraction. And they all get fucking mad because you ain't paying them what they should be getting paid. So they get all, they get together and, you know, they come and, come after the promoter who you know you add in a little bit of a, like a love triangle where you know one of the freaks who has you know seemingly a normal girl who loves him but then she only loves him because he's like the featured freak who's yeah. making bank you know what I mean he's the top freak yeah and th- by the way that's how women are anyway they don't give a goddamn fuck what you look like. All you got to do is flash green in front of them. They'll be on the <laughs> knees sucking dick in a heartbeat. <laughs> God. That's true. You woke up and chose violence today. I'm not. <laughs> I, wo- I woke up. Wow. I woke up and chose the truth. You chose violence, my friend. Coming in. At 1.26. Here's one that I used to rent from the video store all the time from 1994. It's Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings. Oh, man. I love Blood yeah. Wings. Uh, Blood Wings came out in the early 90s. This is something that was... um, This was something that was only for the 90s. A lot of people don't realize this. Give y'all a history lesson. The straight-to-video craze... Um, didn't start until the 1990s. And one of the earlier ones that was straight to video was Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. Now, when you think of like straight to DVD or straight to streaming service or straight to whatever that we have today, the movie could be good, the movie could be crap. Sometime maybe good, sometime maybe shit. Right. And, uh, but... The early movies that were straight to, to, to video were, at least in my opinion, had a little bit more effort to it. And anyway, Pumpkin Hit 2 is great. This was actually the first Pumpkin Hit movie I ever watched before the first Pumpkin Hit. My local video store didn't have the first Pumpkin Hit movie for some reason. And um, anyway, this one is about a uh, a group of uh high schoolers i guess called themselves the blood wings and back in the 50s or whatever they used to mess with this deformed boy yeah and they actually ran him into like this old mine shaft when they they like like, fucking with him they fucked with him and they killed him so years and years and years later um the uh you know the same thing with the first one you know vengeance the old lady that was taking care of him calls upon vengeance to pumpkin head 
because the new teenagers have, you know, fucked with her, caused her to get all burn and shit. And, but now the pumpkin hit is not only after these new kids that have fucked with old Miss Osi. <laughs> That's her name, by the way. Um, but they're actually coming after the older kids from the 50s who are now grown up. One of them's a mayor. One of them's a farmer. The other two are, they raise chickens. There's one that's a mailman, lives in a barn. And, uh, you know, Kane Hodder plays one of them. R.L. Maloff, or however you say his name, plays one of them. It's a great movie. It's a great movie, and it's a product of its time. You can tell that this is a 90s movie. I thought this, like when I first saw this movie as a kid, I thought it, it was in theaters at some point, and I just missed it. I would have went and saw it if I was old enough. Yeah, me too. It's a it's an amazing movie. It's a it's one of those like some days I think it's on par with the first one. Well, yeah, I mean it's kind of one of those things where it's like I saw this first, and even though I really liked the first one, but you know, some days. <clears throat> Some days. Coming in at number 125, another Italian horror film, slasher, um, Jallo, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how you really pronounce this. I'll tell you how I pronounce this. It came out in 1982, and it's called Tin Beret. Oh, Tin Beret. Tin Beret. T-E-N-E-B-R-A-E. If that's not how you spell it, or I know that's how you spell it. If that's not how you say it, I am sorry. But, again... Um, there is a lot of Italian films that fall into the Jallo films, uh, category and a lot of them follow the same formula and a lot of them can get, you know, much like slasher films, a lot of them can get repetitive. Uh, Tin Beret takes it to a whole new level of violence. Like it does everything that the ones that came before it does. However, the violence is just raised a little bit more further with uh, the, you know, the, I don't know, which, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it feels more mean. It's more like, it's, it's very angry. Yeah, like the like, ones that come before it, you'll get a slash of the neck. This one, you'll get a slash, but like slow, like. Like, the guy's, like, not only doing it, but he's fucking mad when he's doing it. Yeah, it's very, very intense. Like, very more, like, almost like hate fucking somebody. Like, you know, yeah, you have your regular fucking, but then you have, like, hate fucking. Right. It's like that. I know that's a weird comparison, and I don't know where the fuck it came from, but that's my best, best way to compare it. Like, you get, like... It's like, with Jason, it's like a quick, and it's over with. But with this one, it's like, you know, the hand is like, you feel like it's just fucking digging into the neck. Like, yeah. just like, he hates this person. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, like you said, like a Jason kill where it's like one whack, you're dead, and like an Art the Clown who is just way too fucking overkill. Yeah. it's It's almost like that. Um, coming in at number 124 from 1996, Tremors 2 Aftershock. Now, you want to talk about a fun fucking series. The Tremor movies are the fun fucking series. And, uh, you know. Do you think there's a bad Tremors movie? I have always been entertained. I mean, I definitely could rank them as far as which ones I think are better. But it would be one of those things where I'd be like, look, I love all these movies. Like, I feel like... I feel like all of them entertain me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like when you tell somebody or show somebody the Tremors movies, like, once you, like, know what Tremors are about, you pretty much, that's what you're getting. Like, yeah. It, I don't think, I don't, I, I find enjoyment in all of them, personally. That's why I yeah. asked if you, like, thought there was a bad one, because, I mean, I feel like there's not really a bad Tremors movie. No, and, um... I got Aftershock Part 2 here, number 124. This is when um, they went from being just grab boys coming up out of the ground 
to flying. Well, they wasn't flying in this one. That 